going through. They just want to see God for themselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if we would be honest with ourselves, there are some things that we don't understand. There are some things in life that just doesn't make sense to us, but we've got to learn how to trust God for ourselves. We've got to learn how to see him in our midst. Sometimes Jesus is right there in the midst. We're looking for him, but he's right there all of the while. Sometimes you didn't know how you were going to make it, how you were going to raise those kids all by yourself, but God provided over and over again. And as you look back, On your life, you could see how he was right there in the midst. Sometimes you had to overcome some things, some obstacles that were in your way. Uh And you look back on your life and you see God was right there. God sent that person right there at that time. God provided that job right there at that time. God provided that friend in your life at that time. Nobody can make it on their own. All I'm trying to say is sometimes we need other folk in our lives. And if you can't find nobody down here, the song say, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sin and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry all of our needs to God in prayer. These disciples had some questions. And if you would have seen Jesus die the way he died, you would have needed some proof. None of the disciples believed Jesus was going to be raised up. All of them had to be convinced. Now they put the body in the tomb. Because the next day was Passover. They had to do it in a hurry. They didn't have time to spice it up and to wrap it up like they wanted to. They had to do stuff quick, fast, in a hurry. It was their aim on the Sunday to go back and do it the right way. But when Mary got there, she found the tomb. The door was already open. She found that the body of Jesus was not in the tomb. She found the clothing they've taken my Lord where have they put him the gardener said to her Mary and when she heard Mary she knew only one person could call her name like that she realized that it was Jesus who she was talking to so she ran and she told the disciples who were in the upper room she said I've seen the Lord he said uh you haven't seen him. We saw how he died. You, you didn't see the Lord. But Peter and John began to run to the tomb. And the Bible says that because Peter was the oldest, John outran him. <laughs> and when John got to the tomb, he was too scared to go in, so he just stood on the outside. And when Peter got there to the tomb, Peter went in, and Peter saw that Jesus was not there. John saw the grave clothes and believed. That's why he's the writer of this gospel. And his gospel is concerned about us believing. Because Jesus is going to tell us, blessed are they who believe who have not seen. Let me tell you something. John was the only one of the disciples who believed that Jesus was raised without seeing Jesus. Oh, let me tell you something. John was the only one who was able to see Jesus and believe that Jesus was raised simply because of the grave clothes. He saw the big piece on one side as though the body had just elapsed from it. And then he saw the head piece wrapped up, folded up. Nice and neat. So John said only one thing could have caused this. Jesus is alive. And he folded up that headpiece himself. Nobody came and stole the body. Because why would you unwrap a dead body? Why would you leave the clothing behind? If he's all blooded, bruised, why would you take the clothes off and carry a dead corpse like that? It doesn't make sense. You would leave the clothes on if you're going to take the body out. So John put it all together and said, Jesus has risen. 
And when Jesus came into the room, he put all of their questions to rest. But Jesus, when he came the first time, Thomas wasn't in the company. So Thomas was then given the opportunity, and then Thomas says something that none of the other disciples said. I know that when Jesus said, asked the question to his disciples, whom do men say that I am? The scripture says all of them were quiet, right? Yes, sir. But the Holy Spirit told Peter, yeah. thou art the Christ, oh, the yeah. son of the living God. Yeah. But when Thomas says what he has to say, the Holy Ghost didn't tell him that. This was something that Thomas discovered for himself. This was something that Thomas discovered because he had questions. This was something that Thomas found out because he had doubts. All I'm trying to say is that his doubts didn't leave him doubtful. His doubts pushed him to ask questions. His questions were answered. And his faith was strengthened. He grew in his faith. He said, my Lord and my God. And so what John says, this is the conclusion of my gospel. Because this is the point that I've been trying to make. I said in the first chapter, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same that was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and through him. Not one thing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men that shined in the darkness. And the darkness could not comprehend it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory. The glory is of the only begotten full of grace and truth. John said, this is what I've been trying to get you to see. Thomas, even though he doubted, he understood that if Jesus was raised from the dead, he's not only Lord, but he is also God. So don't let your doubt keep you in doubt. Jesus said, don't be unbelieving, Thomas, but believing. You've seen what you wanted to see. John says many other signs Jesus did that are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the son of God. This was the conclusion of John's gospel. He said we don't have to go any further. He gave us seven signs. But in the 21st chapter there is a miraculous catch. There is another sign. But John didn't have to include that one because everything that was needed to have us to believe had been already done. You read in your Sunday school lesson, no one who was born blind has ever been able to see. Jesus can put an end to your doubts today. Someone has said, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. Oftentimes, Jesus would do more miracles with his disciples, and he'll ask them the question, why did you doubt? Don't allow your doubt to keep you away from Jesus. Allow your doubt to draw you closer to him because if you doubt and you ask questions, your questions will be answered. He may not come when you want him, but I'm so glad that he's always right on time. I want to see Jesus for myself. I know what you're saying, but I want to see Jesus for myself. I want to experience him in my midst. I want to experience his peace. I want to experience him as Lord and also God. Maybe you've been in the church a long time, but you've been relying on what other folks said about Jesus. You heard him say that he is a lawyer in the courtroom. He's a doctor in the sick room. 